if you look at the globe today, uh, you find that you living in 20% of the population of what's called the developed world. So on that planet Earth of six billions, you have 80% of the population is in the developing or underdeveloped world. So we can advance science in America, but if we leave 80% of the population suffering, uh, the consequences is what we're seeing today in the world. And so in my view, science education is the one that provides the rational thinking. And so it allows to reduce dogmas in the world. Science also is an international language. You can speak Spanish. You can speak Texan, <laughs> if I may yeah, say very so. Very well. Uh, you can speak Egyptian. You can speak Arabic. You can speak any language. But these are different languages. You wouldn't be able to communicate. However, scientists in Texas, in Cairo, in Germany, in the Los Angeles, they all speak the same language. And so science also is a binding force. So not only you have the rational thinking approach, but you also have a uniting force in the world. And it seems to me that the privileged countries that have the resources should be really utilizing some of these resources to enhance the role of rational thinking in the world and to help developing countries make the transition into a more advanced societies. It doesn't mean that you be able to succeed with all of these countries. It doesn't mean that you will tomorrow change the six million uh, on the planet Earth so that everybody will be rich. It's impossible. Even within America, we have a distribution of poor and rich people. But the world has to see an effort by the developed world to make investment in science education, education, science education, and in building some infrastructure to help these countries tackle major problems of health, of food, and many others. So I see, and perhaps this is naive, but I see no way out of investing and using science education around the globe to try to help this population of the half-north.